Well, I want to welcome you to our program today. Our special guest is Dennis Rima. And so, Dennis, uh, thank you so much for coming on the program today. Thank you, Pastor. He, yeah, he's the, de uh, the development uh, director for, well, the Clarity Clinic here in Dubuque. And so one of the things, Dennis, as I just think about the Clarity Clinic, and I know you do a lot of different things, but you know, this is Christmas, and I think about the Christmas story and and a young girl by the name of Mary who all of a sudden is pregnant and she's wondering what in the world is going on. And, you know, I can about imagine how frightened and how, you know, but then the angel came and, and reassured her that, you know, that this is all God's plan, even mm -hmm. how ridiculous this may all, you know, in her wonderment and the mystery, that this is God's plan for her. And we also reassured Joseph because he was so uh, much Absolutely. a part of this. But that's uh, where I look at the Clarity Clinic, is that they're so much into like a angel ministry, reassuring, you know, young girls and, and, and also boys, that are young men, that, that what is happening here is a reality and how important this little child within is, uh, is and how we want to make that little child to be born and and what God has in store for all these little ones. And so, well, anyway, uh, Dennis, why don't you share a little bit about uh, the history of the Clarity Clinic? And so, as we think about when did, when did this all start? Well, uh, Pastor, in 1994, uh, there was a woman whose name was Jenny Neese, felt that the Dubuque area needed a uh, place for girls who are in an unplanned or crisis pregnancy to go for counseling or help. Mm -hmm. And so she started the Tri-State Pregnancy Center. And it, girls would come, like I said, who were in an unplanned pregnancy, and that's what they would do. They would get counseling, you know, what to do. I mean, like you were just saying, even with Mary uh, in the Bible, uh, so many of these girls, if you find out that you're pregnant, uh, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of um, nervousness, you know, my mom and dad are gonna be so mad. Uh, you know, can I raise a baby? I'm in school, I'm in college, I'm trying to get my degree. There's just, there's a lot of fear. And uh, so uh, the girls would come and they would counsel them and uh, try to convince them the beauty of God's beautiful child in their womb. Uh, and hopefully it would convince them to be able to keep the baby, especially mm -hmm. have, if they had the support they needed. Uh, some girls, you know, their parents kick them out of the house if they find out they're pregnant and so they have no place to go, they have no support at all. Uh, so if a girl just feels, you know, I'm too young, I just can't raise this baby, I don't have the support, then of course we talk to them about adoption mm -hmm. because adoption is a beautiful thing. You know we have so many couples in our uh, country and our world that would love to have a child but they just aren't able to have one. And what a beautiful gift you can give mm -hmm. but the gift of life to another couple who can't, mm -hmm. um, you know, produce their own. So what ended up happening then was uh, they did a survey in the nation and they found out that a girl who is pregnant and is really debating whether she's gonna have an abortion or she's gonna keep the child. So she's, that's called being abortion vulnerable or abortion minded. If she sees a picture of her baby on an ultrasound machine, they have found that over 80% of them will actually keep the baby. They'll make that decision to keep it. And I, I think that's got at work because I think there is a bond between a woman and that baby in her womb. And when people are trying to convince her, oh, that's not really a baby, that's just a blob of tissue and so on. When they actually see that baby, whether it's little toes or the little fingers or even the heartbeat when they hear that, I think they're just really, there's a bond there. And they realize that is a baby. I want, a, I want my baby. And so when that survey was done, so many of the pregnancy centers in our country said, we need to get an ultrasound machine. If that's gonna have that kind of an impact on girls making their decision, we need one. And so the pregnancy center here in Dubuque decided that they were gonna get one. And Focus on the Family uh, sent out a uh, letter to all the pregnancy centers in the country saying, if you purchase an ultrasound machine, because of the effect it's having, the positive effect on girls keeping their baby, we will pay for half of it for you. Wow. So the pregnancy center said, we're gonna do it. So they purchased a, an ultrasound machine. Well, you know, if you're gonna give ultrasounds, you need to have a registered nurse, an ultrasonographer, and you need to have a doctor who reads those 
uh, ultrasounds to make sure that mm -hmm. it, you know everything's good with the baby and so on. So uh, we hired a nurse. They hired a registered nurse. We got three now four doctors who volunteer their services. They each take a week and read our ultrasounds for us and so on. But once you do that, once you add that medical part of it with the registered nurse, the doctor, so on, you have to actually become a medical clinic then. So then in 2005, they changed the name from the Tri-State Pregnancy Center to the Clarity Clinic mm -hmm. uh, to become an actual medical clinic. And um, the Clarity part of it is our goal is when a girl comes in and she is just, her head spinning, you know, do I keep the baby, do I not? I'm scared, I don't know what to do. We just wanna sit down, counsel her, make things clear. Don't make a rush decision. Let's stop and think about what's going on, mm -hmm. what kind of support you have before you go do something that you're gonna regret. Because mm -hmm. the one thing that abortion clinics don't do is they just say, we'll take care of your problem for you when you come in. They don't talk to them about uh, the physical, the emotional, and the um, psychological repercussions that happen to a, a young gal or any kind of a woman who ends up having an abortion. So that's what we do. Yeah, and like you said, that there's such a bond that's already taking place within a womb. I mean, that's why God right. has designed us. That Absolutely. It's not like, well, we're just going to, like you say, get rid of a mass of cells here. But That's right. But rather that this is a child, this is a person that is within you. But what I'm hearing is, you know, that the Clarity Clinic is a place that, like, when your head is spinning and, you know, your emotions and your fear and everything, and you're not necessarily thinking straight, all your hormones are all messed up. Amen. Wondering... He, can you know to have a place where the clarity clinic is their friend absolutely and we will help you to reassure you and we will you know make sure that you know you're making you understanding what options are here and what is the best you know option for you and this little one within you and to say well let's let's make the best let's make the best choice here right yeah exactly exactly and and we were doing that, and then it was dawning on us, Pastor, that, uh, you know, these girls, let's say they got the ultrasound, they said, you know what, I want to keep my baby. You know, I've, yeah, my boyfriend's going to support me, or my sometimes husband, because sometimes even married couples, unfortunately, choose to have abortions. Um, or my parents said they'll help raise the baby or whatever, you know, while I'm still in school, or whatever the case might be. Well, then we just realized we were kind of sending them out the door, you know, and kind of like, okay, go get them, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And we really weren't preparing them to be parents. Mm -hmm. And so, and sometimes that's what pregnancy centers hear a lot from people who are pro-choice. Oh yeah, you get the mom to, you know, convince her to keep the baby and then you don't do anything to help her after she makes mm -hmm. that decision. You just put her out there on her own. Well, you know, we realize we need to do more. And so that's when we started our First Steps program. And what our First Steps program is, Pastor, is it's these girls come in after they find out that they're pregnant, they're going to keep the baby mm -hmm. and they decide, uh, you know, what can you do to help me? So we offer classes. We offer birthing classes. We offer finance classes. Dupaco comes in and does a finance class for us. So they learn how to deal with money. They learn uh, the things they need for the baby. They learn infant CPR. Uh, they set, they, we have goals classes. So they set goals for what they want to be as a mom. Uh, if the dad is involved in, the, in their life, he comes too to the classes. So he learns how to be a good father and what his responsibility is. And this program, Pastor, is just taken off. I mean, we saw um, two years ago when we moved into our present facility, we saw, uh, we moved in in May and from May to December, I think we saw, oh, I think we saw about, I think it was about seven or 800 client mm -hmm. appointments. Last year, we had over 1,500 client appointments. And this year, as we finish up the year, we've gone over 2,100. That's how many girls that have come for either, uh, you know, a medical help, you know, if they're uh, in an unplanned pregnancy or they've come for our individual classes or our group classes. So, so many girls are like, you know what, I can do this, but I'm just financially, I just don't have a lot of money. Well, they're able to come and when they, when they take these classes, they get what are called baby bucks. So if they come to a class, uh, let's say a birthing class, they, it's a half hour long, usually 45 minutes, they get four baby bucks mm -hmm. and they save those. They can use them right away if they want because we've got things they can purchase, baby clothes or um, baby bottles or whatever, and that might cost two baby bucks. Or a lot of them will 
will, will come to more classes. They'll get eight, 12, 16. They'll, they'll try to accumulate as many as they can, and then they can buy a stroller, they can buy a crib, they can buy a little swing. Mm -hmm. A lot of them really like to purchase diapers because they all need diapers. Mm -hmm. So, and diapers are expensive. Oh, yeah. So a lot of them like to use their baby bucks for diapers. We got a boutique, so there's all kinds of baby clothes. And like I said, this program's just taken off to where we've had to expand our hours um, because we want to try to get more girls in that need our services. We want them to be able to come once, more than once every two weeks for a class. If they want to come once a week for a class, that's what we'd like to do. So uh, if you saw our building over on 3365 Hillcrest, our whole downstairs is our whole first steps program. We have gotten, we have grown so much that we just don't have enough room for all the girls that need our help. And so as a result of that now, uh, we just purchased that building from the one we were leasing, uh, the one we're at, we've been there two years. We thought it would work perfect, but we're just out of room. And what happens is when they come for these group classes, these moms come and they'll sit in the group class, maybe seven or eight people. We've just got it in the corner downstairs because it's all we got room for. Well, they might have to bring their two or three year old with them mm -hmm. because they're an at home mom, stay at home mom or whatever, and they, don't ha they can't afford a babysitter or can't get a babysitter, is not available. So they bring their child with them. Mm -hmm. There's no place for that child to play while they're taking the mm -hmm. class. You know, they're out walking around in the boutique area and they're kind of getting into things. Not that they're, you know, that's okay, mm -hmm. but we need a kid's zone. We need a room for those kids that they can go play. We'd have toys and all that stuff for them. We just don't have that at this present location. So we're excited because we're looking to do an expansion at the building. Well, it just sounds like, you know, the whole ministry, if you will, is just expanding in so many different ways. And, and it's just showing, you know, just how many people are in this position. And they're finding that the Clarity Clinic is meeting a lot of their needs and it's being a blessing and that God is taking this whole situation and turning it into something really good. Such Amen. A, a real yeah. blessing. And so as you, and so I thank the Lord for this, you know, as we look yeah. at the Clarity Clinic and just how this is expanding. But with that expansion, like you say, as far as, well, we bought a new building and boy, we got enough room here that's going to last us forever. But then as you continue to expand, well, we know that we can even outgrow those buildings sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, uh, a lot of a lot of what you are doing then right now is that you're looking to to have a big exp you know to expand your your building as far as where it's located and you know there's a diagram or a picture of it here and also then the layout it's like you're almost more than doubling your your space exactly yep we're going to add about 7500 square feet um, just when we purchased the building we were at, we had about an acre to the north of us that was also ours that we just always thought, you know, that we'd mow in the summer and so on and it would just be a nice grassy area. But I think God had a, a plan oh, before sure. we ever moved over there thinking, no, that, that's not going to stay a grassy area because you're going to, the way I'm restoring and reforming your place, you're going to need, you're going to need that for, to expand to a bigger building. Um, as people donate, so many people donate clothes, baby clothes and strollers and that to us, Pastor, which are really nice. So we clean them all up real good. Uh, you know, we wash every piece of clothing that's donated um, uh, so that it's nice. A lot of people will donate, you know, brand new clothes. They'll go to the store, Yonkers or JC Penney or wherever, Walmart, and they'll purchase new ones. They'll drop them off, say, we want to donate to your boutique or whatever. Uh, so when people bring in or donate that we've just got a real little processing room where we got our volunteer one volunteer and they're trying to go through all that and then we got a washer dryer so we wash them all and so on we just need a much bigger processing area this mm -hmm. i mean to be honest with you it's about the size of this little area you and i are talking that's all the bigger it is so we need a processing area we need an area where people could come at night after our hours and and drop off donations if they want to of clothes and that uh, so we could put that in this new expansion area. We need a kid zone, like I said. Uh, we need a bigger, we don't have a group class space. We got, like I said, we're in the corner downstairs where we'll have, we might have seven to 10 gals that come for a class and there just isn't any room. So we need just a nice big classroom for those. We need a, a new area for our individual classes. And one of the most important reasons we need this expansion, Pastor, is we've got one entrance into the clinic and when a girl comes in who might be thinking she's 
pregnant, not sure. We talked before about her emotions running and she's concerned, she's scared. She, you know, what if I find out I am pregnant after my pregnancy test, you know, gosh, I just don't see how I can, you know, have a baby or raise a baby and, and go to school or go to college or whatever. So, you know what, I, I wonder if I should maybe get an abortion or should I keep it? You know, that whole abortion minded, abortion vulnerable thing. So she's sitting out in our waiting room waiting to go back for her pregnancy test and to meet with the counselor. She's sitting there nervous thinking of all this. If we have a young gal that walks in who's going to take one of our first steps class downstairs, she might have her two or three year old with her you know, that she's got to bring with her to that. And while they're sitting out there waiting to go on for their class, you know, heaven forbid, but sometimes it happens that little two or three old might throw a little bit of a temper tantrum or start crying or throwing a fit or whatever. And if you got a girl sitting here thinking, you know, if she's pregnant, does she want to keep it or not? And she sees a kid that's acting up in that, sometimes that could have a huge effect on if she decides to keep it or not. So what our goal is with the expansion, we're hoping that when, when they walk in, they'll be able to walk in our main entrance and the girls who are going to our first steps program, they might have the two or three old with them. They'll go into a door to the left that'll go into that area. And the medical person who's going to check in for a pregnancy test or whatever, she'll go into a door to the right where she'll sit in a different area. And I just think it's best that we separate those two areas out. So that girl's decision isn't influenced just by some two year old who might be having a bad morning. So we just feel that's a tremendous thing that would add with our expansion. Um, we also think it would be good, you know, we have so many churches who support us, Pastor, and what we're doing. And we're thinking, you know, would you ever, uh, would a pastor or a church ever wanna, you know, have a youth group meeting or a social justice meeting or whatever in our facility? We wanna give back because so many churches, we're 100% donor supported, and so many churches support us through their financial donations, or I'll come and speak at the, their church and we'll do a uh, baby bottle fundraiser, and they'll raise thousands of dollars for us, and that's what allows us to keep going. So we wanna be able to have a nice room in this expansion where if they wanna come and, and meet in our building and have a meeting or whatever, what a way for us to give back to them. Right. So just another thought we're having with that expansion. Now, one of the things that, well, as we've been listening to Dennis, we can see, you know, just what a wonderful ministry this is and the impact that it's making upon, you know, the lives of people. And so as we, you know, think about this, we really feel the love that is there for these, well, for these young gals and also for the guys. But as we are feeling this love, it's, it's the love of God, that God cares. God cares about you. God cares about these people. God cares about this situation. Just like, you know, we mentioned about Mary, you know, being the mother of Jesus, that God cares for every mother, just like Mary. Amen. And that little child that is within. And so we can see where, where this ministry is touching the lives of more and more people. You can hear Dennis uh, share some of the figures of the people that have been coming in. But he also mentions that this is all volunteer driven. It is also by the, the love and the generosity of people who contrib contribute to a, not just in terms of their volunteering, but also financially. And that's what Dennis is, is that he's their financial or he's their developer. And mm -hmm. so with that, but you know, Dennis, uh, you don't receive any money from the government, do you? Not one penny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And so they've got ultrasound machines. They've got all kinds of, you know, diapers. I mean, all, everything that a baby needs that they are providing. That this is not just a once in, once out, but that they really f are there to back and support the mothers and these children, you know, f throughout this whole time. So that making sure that this is going to be really a, a good adjustment for these mothers and, and for their fathers as well. Mm -hmm. That's right, Pastor. And you know, besides our First Steps program, you know, we've also got a new program called Boundaries. Uh, and it's just a wonderful program. We've got it for fathers and for mothers. And what it is, it's teaching people what their boundaries should be. It's we talk a lot about um, you know things that are going on in our society today that are becoming so prevalent, um, human trafficking how you can uh, uh, prevent yourself or your child to get, him, you know, to get caught in human trafficking. Um, uh, there's a real issue with sexting. There's a real issue with young people just understanding what their boundaries should be when they're with people. 
and uh, we go into the schools. When I started 12 years ago, we were in four schools. We are now in over 15 schools doing our sexual purity program. And the schools have been fantastic saying, our students need to hear this. They need to hear this. Right now in our country, uh, sexually transmitted diseases are in an epidemic level. The, the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, just came out last year and said, we have an epidemic in the United States of America of sexually transmitted diseases. And they're predicting that this year, one out of every three high school students will graduate with an STD. That's one out of every three. Wow. That is really scary. So we're going into the high schools, we're going into the middle schools, and now the schools are saying, do you have something for the fourth and fifth graders? We're seeing issues with fourth and fifth graders already with, with uh, how they're talking sexually and so on. Do you have a program for them? So we're going into the schools. We got a great program. Uh, Angie Jones is our education uh, person who goes into the schools and she is sharing with these students what's going on. Uh, you know, it used to be we mainly talked about, you know, the whole girls, you know, how you make good decisions so that you don't have to deal with getting pregnant. Now, because sexual activity is becoming so active among young people, uh, it's sexually transmitted diseases because what Angie's teaching them is you got to remember so many of these sexually transmitted diseases have no cure. So if you have it, you have it for life. Mm -hmm. And so these kids, their ears are popping wide open uh, when she comes. Their eyes and their ears are really listening mm -hmm. to what's going on. And I think a lot of them are like, this is scary and I don't want anything to do with that. And many of them now are making that decision to stay sexually pure until they get married. What an awesome, awesome program this is that we have. Again, the schools say you can come in and present it, but we can't pay you. We can't pay for your teacher. We can't pay for your mileage because we go in, the, with a, in about a 45 minute radius mm -hmm. of Dubuque with our program. And uh, so how do we do that? How can we pay for this? Our donors, we got people who donate, uh, who give generously of their, whether it's their time as a volunteer or of their finances so that we can go into the schools and present this program. Mm -hmm. So you need you know, lots of support as far as volunteers. You know, churches are oftentimes looking at what are those parachurch ministries in our yep. communities that need to be supported because they're doing great work. You know, here is the lone voice of an organization that is teaching sexual purity. I mean, that is yep. something where those boundaries have been eroded over the years Amen. to where now yes. we're in a sexually permissive society where there are no boundaries, whereas now exactly. you're saying, no, there are boundaries. And this is what we teach. And we're all recognizing just how important this is for the health of our people, for the health of our society. And so that's the beauty of the Clarity Clinic is that you have the resources, you have the people who, who are educated and skilled to be able to talk about these things with our young people. And where else can you find that? Good luck. You know, so you're just touching on, we're just kind of scratching the surface of all of what you do in terms of just the importance of, of this ministry and, and but how daunting it is sometimes being the developer and having to raise you know, all the money and <laughs> That's the, you know, right. raising the awareness. This is the important minister that we have. How do we convince people you know, that they need to be part of this? And this is a good way. If you're looking to serve the Lord, you know, or, you know, looking to serve, this is a good way. This is the way our church, our organization, or as, as an individual I can serve. But now, as I just have looked at the plan for this expansion of your building, well, here again, you know, it, it's just what a vision. And I can just see how this is going to set a ministry that is going to help you know, thousands of people for years to come. But here again, nothing comes for free. And it, uh, it does cost a pretty penny to build something like this. <laughs> That's right, Pastor. You know, and uh, you know, as we get close to wrapping up here, I, I, you've just done a beautiful job of, of really, for the people realizing what a wonderful, you know, for me to do it as a development director, I just hope, I hope I'm getting through to the people and you, you've done a beautiful job of kind of uh, summarizing it all and I sure appreciate that. And, you know, I just wanna say to the people out there because I know this show goes out through all Northeast Iowa. This is a ministry of God that we are operating at the Pregnancy Center, at the Clarity Clinic. And I know a lot of people are thinking, you know what, we, we could do a good year-end donation where we could, uh, bless the Clarity Clinic because, you know, this expansion that we're looking at is going to be about $1.5 million. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we know that there's people out there that could step up and say, you know what, we can do this. Our goal is to do it in a, in a five-year plan. So we're looking for people who can say, you know what, if you could give us $5,000 a year for five years and make it a $25,000 pledge, or there's people out there that can say, you know what, my spouse and I have been really blessed. The Lord's blessed us with children and grandchildren and great grandchildren possibly. And you know, we, we've been in good health and we've been blessed with a wonderful marriage. And uh, you know, we, uh, we've got a nice house and, and we've got uh, good vehicles and a good job and so on. Maybe we could give $20,000 a year for five years, $100,000. We know there's people like that out there. And if that's you, and the Lord lays on your heart, this is wonderful what they're doing for these young gals, how they're helping them, how they're providing classes for them, how they're helping the fathers of the babies and helping them to understand their responsibility uh, in this whole thing. Um, we also have a post-abortion program. So we have a program for girls who have made the decision to have an abortion and then are dealing with the, with the hurt, with the psychological and the emotional pain. You know, we are got a program that we meet with them and counsel them. So we're trying to do so many things to help. And if you can help us, um, you'll see on, our, on the screen, uh, we have text to give, we have uh, uh, my email, we've got partnersofclarityclinic.com. That's our donating site. If you would go there and say, we're gonna do something special at Christmas or end of the year to help the, the Clarity Clinic, we would sure appreciate it. And uh, I'm just grateful, Pastor, that you've allowed me to come and, and share this. And I, I see your heart for the unborn and we're just blessed to have people like you who support us and all the other churches and donors who, who do so much to help us. Yeah. Well, Dennis, uh, thank you for all your good work and the good work of the Clarity Clinic. I think that certainly is something that has shined here in, in this time that we've had. And I would just uh, reinforce all of you to, to be generous. You know, be generous during this Christmas time, uh, at the end of the year giving, but throughout the year to understand that this is a ministry that continues on. They need all of your support. And when we think about investing in the kingdom of God, investing, yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. this is one of those investments that uh, it's just um, the sky's the limit as far as just all of the people that, that this ministry is going to support and help. And so here again, this is Dennis Rima of the Clarity Clinic. Thank you so much for being on our program today. Thank you, and Pastor. And God bless all of you. Mm -hmm.